Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stop on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. This is the fifth video in the psychiatry section, and we're going to cover the eating disorders bulimia, anorexia nervosa, and binge eating disorder. Eating disorders are abnormal behaviors involving food and are due to psychiatric conditions. There are many causes of abnormal eating habits, but if the situation is better explained by another medical problem, it is not classified as an eating disorder. For example, a depressed patient who loses their appetite has an abnormal level of food intake, but does not necessarily have an eating disorder. Our discussion will focus on anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa, which have many similarities. In both cases, patients are preoccupied with food, their physical appearance, and how much they weigh. They may have slow self-esteem due to their distorted self-image. These disorders are significantly more common in young females, and the treatment for both disorders primarily focuses on SSRI antidepressants and various types of psychotherapy. There's a significant amount of overlap between the presentation of bulimia and anorexia nervosa. The key distinguishing factor is the patient's BMI, which is very low in anorexia nervosa and normal or even mildly elevated in bulimia nervosa. Despite popular belief, you cannot use the presence of purging activities alone to distinguish the two. Patients with anorexia can use things like laxatives and intentional vomiting just like bulimic patients. Bulimia nervosa describes periods of overeating, also known as binging, followed by compensatory activities. Patients feel out of control during a binging episode. Their BMI tends to be within a normal limit or even slightly high, contributing to their feelings of, of loss of control. Although this warning is debated by some, current guidelines suggest not using bupropion, also known as Welbutrin, which is a type of antidepressant, in bulimic patients as they may have an increased risk for seizures as a side effect. Binge eating disorder was recently added to the DSM, so it is unlikely to show up on step one. It has similar binging behavior to bulimia, but there is no purging and the patients don't necessarily have body image issues. There are a couple of key signs that may help you diagnose a patient with bulimia. For example, bulimic patients tend to vomit, which induces a metabolic alkalosis due to the loss of stomach acid. They also have enlarged parotid glands, loss of enamel on their teeth, or esophageal pathology. Those that use laxatives frequently tend to have acidosis due to the loss of bicarb. These activities can also be present in anorexia too. Anorexia nervosa is a pattern of eating very little and or using excessive exercise as a result of a very distorted body image. These patients may feel like they are overweight even if they are very, very thin. They tend to have very low BMIs, below 17, as well as significant weight loss in a short period of time. As a result, severe cases can require hospitalization to correct the starvation and the metabolic abnormalities. When a female's body fat percentage drops to a very low level, the pulsatile release of GnRH from the hypothalamus stops. This results in amenorrhea, which is, course, is the absence of menstrual period. The endocrine system is basically saying, I can't have a baby right now. I'm not even getting enough food for just me. I can't feed someone else. Later in life, chronically anorexic patients are prone to developing osteoporosis, also due to this low level of estrogen. Anorexia may look similar to hypothyroidism because of the fatigue, and the changes to their skin and hair. But the key difference is hypothyroidism has weight gain. Be careful. The term anorexia is used often in step one as a descriptive term for loss of appetite and resultant weight loss. Note that this is very different than anorexia nervosa, which is sometimes abbreviated as anorexia. Anorexia can be used to explain a symptom of any disease or illness or a side effect of a treatment. It is not psychological in origin. In fact, patients with anorexia nervosa do not technically have anorexia because they usually have a, a very strong appetite and feel hungry. The presence of an appetite can be used to differentiate anorexia nervosa from things like depression, where patients tend to lose their appetite entirely. If you like this video or have any suggestions for how to improve Stomp on Step 1, please comment below. Your feedback helps us improve the channel and we love to hear from you all. If you have any questions, you can also put those in a comment and we will do our best to answer them as quickly as possible. The next video in the psychiatry question is going to cover personality disorders. We're going to use famous examples from history as well as characters on TV and movies to help to illustrate each disorder. If you would like to watch that video now, you can click the black box here. 
Thank you so much for watching and good luck with the rest of your studying.